I think the, um, the rainbow evolved as I was writing it, you know, looking for hope, looking for some measure of hope and promise and renewal within the Shoah and after the Shoah. In other words, everybody who was surviving or trying to survive needed to look for a rainbow, otherwise they could not wake up to another day under those circumstances, I believe. August 1944, family was already in terrible shape. The sister had already almost died of, of a disease. She had miraculously recovered, and they were evacuated to Auschwitz in 1944, August. As soon as they got off the trains, they were greeted by the infamous Dr. Mengele. There was a line, and um, my mother and her brother were pointed to the right, to life. Her sister and her mother were pointed to the left. They did not know which is which when they are, but my mother does remember Dr. Mengele asking my mother in German, be out bist du, how old are you? And my mother remembers hesitating because she wasn't sure what she should say, but she had the presence of mind and she lied and she said, Ich bin 19, 19. They were given a loaf of bread, another thing to fool them. And my mother remembers, she did something which was very dangerous. She took her loaf and ran and gave it to her mother and her sister. Last time she saw them. I was born in Sweden, in Stockholm. My parents realized that there's no Jewish future in Sweden. They worried, who am I gonna marry, could you imagine? What's gonna happen to their kids, you know? Because there wasn't much of a Jewish population. It turns out my great-grandfather, Rabbi Rhinus, was living in America, and he saw my mother's name on the list of survivors, and he knew she was alive. That was the only way they knew who survived. And he contacted her and sponsored her and brought my mother and father and me to America. I lived with my mother's story day and night because my mother was very verbal. My father, on the other hand, was not. So it was, it's what really started me, it got me much more active and involved in the, in the Holocaust. The experience was um, hectic, to say the least. Extremely emotional. Uh, we had a few emotional outbursts on the set. 
where it was kind of surrealistic just to see the um, all the extras dressed up as Jews being evacuated from their homes. It, ha it has some kind of an emotional toll on us. Okay, no, let's get this done, please. I got one. Uh, position number one, camera. Let's get that ready. We're realizing that people today, especially the youth of today, do not have the patience to sit through a two hour movie. At the same time, we know how vital it is that they know the story and remember what happened. Not just to remember, but to remind and to prevent you know, protect the future for the future children, you know, for future generations. How can we do that? By teaching them what happened in communicated in a quick film. My mother, I think her rainbow, my mother was very, in a way, psychic person. Before the war, she had a dream, which actually told her what was going to happen and told her she was going to survive. So my mother always knew she was going to live. My mother was born on 18, which is high. She had an innate feeling she knew she was going to live, but she also had a very sad feeling because she felt her family was not going to survive. So for her, Rainbow was the knowledge that she would survive, and she did everything she had to. 